I can go. Okay. Uh, uh, the, this topic is a uh, minimal invasive technique for treatment of cer cervical spondylotic and uh, myelopathy, NOPLL. First of all, I, I would like to play a tribute to Professor Hamani. He invited me to NSSA many years ago. I, I'm proud of being a member. But we are so far uh, physically, but I must, must mention that we are close in inspiration. Professor Ramani uh, gave me the opportunity to write some topics in the books he published during he, his presidency in the World Federation Spine Committee. And recently we published, published this uh, minimal invasive technique in another book from the, the uh, World Federation Spine Committee. So degenerative cascade is very frequent here in Latin America. Not so frequent is the OPLL, but uh, we deal with the, same, uh, uh, with the same technique. Professor Brake published a very old paper showing the uh, uh, ischemic uh, compression of the spinal cord and Housing published uh, his book on many uh, aspects of the anatomy and physiopathology of this. We know that 75 of the patients will worsen uh, the, the clinical picture, so it's almost uh, always uh, and frequent the indication for surgery. Repetitive movements, segmentation, trauma, previous surgery will uh, present patients with cervical pain, radicalopathy, and myelopathy. So uh, the most frequent symptom is motor deficit in the lower segment, which brings the patient to outpatient clinic. We do the imaging uh, studies, of course, there are some patients who are not clear. They don't have a clinical, clinical uh, picture, but we can go to MRI tractography to study if there is any disturbance of the spine uh, tracts. So uh, we have to do the diagnosis, which includes the ossification of the anterior longitudinal ligament. Uh, usually, we, we do CT scan to clear up if there is any uh, calcification. So uh, the, the clinical treatment is always the similar uh, clinical to, uh, treatment to uh, spine pain and surgery usually is indicated when this conservative uh, uh, treatment is not uh, adequate. So we can go posterior, posterior surgical approach, we can go anterior, and this is what we are going to focus on the corpectomy, which is a very uh, interesting way of doing the, the compression. Here you can see one of our patients. We do it with the micros, uh, microscope and we decompress. And sometimes we do a fusion with bone or a uh, cage. And this is uh, need uh, sometimes inventive uh, approach because the compression is not uh, 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 midline. So we do a uh, very small decompression uh, approach to the body. Usually the patient has uh, uh, arthrodesis by the degenerative process with osteophytes bilaterally and posteriorly. So we go uh, in, uh, in, in a patient with a stable spine. I think this uh, indication for corpectomy only without graft is uh, a procedure for patients who has uh, a stable, uh, usually they don't have any more the disc and, and no movement in this, in this uh, area of the spine. You can see on the, on the right in the below, uh, after uh, three, three years, that the, the bone grow, grow inside the, the opening that we did, but did not uh, compress 
uh, the spinal cord. So we did uh, 12 patients and we follow up them during these four years. They were old elder patients, 60, 69 uh, years of age. Uh, we did, uh, usually they come to the first examination one to three years after the most mobile uh, segments of cervical spine are involved. And uh, we, we uh, did the, this operation, they compressed the spinal cord, and we used the Joe scale for evaluating the patients. As you can see, most of them are older, elder patients. We had two patients that died during this four years follow-up, but not related to the procedure. And we had seven patients improved. One had no improvement and two patients, even after the, patient, the, the procedure, uh, they, they worsened the clinical pre picture. Of course, if you feel that there is instability, you can do uh, a, a use of a graft, bone graft or cage, and stabilize with plates. So this is an illustration of the compression. And uh, during this uh, period, other uh, surgeons develop this uh, uh, onchofeminotomy, which is an option for anterior decompression of the root. And this is the tunnel approach of Gong Shoi in Korea, which is the approach for one osteophyte that is compressing the spine cord. And these are more open situations where you can do a V or an oblique uh, approach to the spine. We usually do the X approach. We can go from below to the inferior osteophyte and from uh, below to the uh, upper osteophyte to decompress the spinal cord. And we can do many options. Uh, if you need to do two, three levels, you can have op options with this uh, uh, is demonstrated in this uh, figure. So here you can see an, an just a, a tunnel option, one of the patients. Here you can see the middle, middle uh, uh, corpectomy. And uh, in my conclusions, I think that uh, anterior approach is less risky for positioning patients. Usually they have they have uh, uh, spinal, uh, the cervical spinal cord compressed, and it's very dangerous to put him in a, a, a different uh, a pro, a different position. So anterior approach for me is shorter time for the procedure. Anterior minimal invasive is safe. Uh, usually, it's a no elder patient. You have to take care and not take too much time for doing the procedure. Uh, I can see that some, uh, most of the patients have an excellent functional outcome, less complication rate after uh, a cause for the surgery. After the compression and stabilization, you may do posterior decompression, it's an option. And corpectomy, I think is ideal for elder and risky patients. Long-term follow-up is almost impossible because these patients are elder and they have other comorbidities. So, so usually they, they will die uh, uh, before some time uh, due to, to other cause. So um, I again thank you very much for the invitation and you have inspired me, as you see, uh, to do a better neurosurgery. Thank you very much, Dr. Ganesh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Maukash, for staying around and giving us the presentation. Uh, uh, just one question. I mean, any of the patients that you did this minimally invasive technique, did they worsen, anybody worsen uh, post-surgery immediate? Was there any worsening? 
Yes, yes. Uh, there is a, a curve of learning <clears throat> as every technique. But I think that the patients that worsen, uh, it was because I tried to take all the bone. Now, now you can just uh, cut bilaterally the bone that is in the dura and leave it calm in the space that you have uh, you have created in the vertebral body so you should not go through when you feel that uh, the bone is uh, uh, inside the the dura because you can have a fistula you can have a lesion usually the lesion is difficult and it floats so as you as you take it, you try to take it out from one side, the other side will press the, the spinal cord. So this is a, a tip that uh, we learn with time and fortunately with some complication. Now I wouldn't take this bone. I would just leave it floating on the dura matter. Thank you well, for the question. Right. Thank you very much.